Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. And I'm Alex. And welcome back to our show after a brief hiatus of shows. For hey. reasons. I think yeah. I think you did an episode explaining that, right? Uh, yeah, I had an episode that explained that, and uh, by the time they listen to this, you will have finally heard my interview with Dustin. Uh, it just took a few weeks to get there, uh, but y- we are back to recording shows. We're back to doing stuff now. If only it were because we were on an awesome vacation in like Cuba or Jamaica. Yeah. No, unfortunately, Ooh, I that take you uh, to Bermuda, Bahama. Come on, pretty uh, mama. Uh, come on, pretty mama. No, unfortunately, <laughs> no. That that is not the circumstances. That is neither here nor there. The point is, is that we are indeed back, and uh, and I've been able to get a little bit more back into the swing of things when it comes to uh, content. I was thinking about a few different topics. I thought that I had some really good ones. Like I was thinking about uh, the idea of mechanics comprehension for new players, how to kind of like explain the process of of, uh, what you wanted to do with those mechanics to make it uh, accessible and make it click for new players. Yeah, that would be an interesting topic. Yeah, yeah. uh, And definitely something we have to talk about. And I had the idea of um, working rules so that you could have dual PCs, like if one player actually wanted to play two different characters in the same campaign, like if you could actually model something uh, about that. I thought that was an interesting subject. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, But you know what? This is actually the first show we're recording after uh, E3. And I want to bitch about Bethesda. I I just really want to complain. I must, Alex. I'm sorry. I just... Okay, Nathan. We'll we'll give you an episode to complain about Bethesda. Which is hard for me because I have been such a big fan of Bethesda in the past. And I guess if I can equate this to what our show is normally about it's how to alienate your fan base oh because we because we know how to do that or no how to no bethesda has taught me at this point is how to alienate your fan base oh i mean yeah they do that occasionally well they're doing a damn good job of it recently So in case you were not aware of what happened during E3, Bethesda had their press conference. You know, so they had Tango, they had Arcane, they had Machine Games, uh, they had Id, and and they all showed games that they're working on. And and those those look good, good. right? You know, because the, the studios that work under Bethesda usually have good product. But now Bethesda themselves, they came out with talking about Fallout 76. The first thing that they do is, is like Todd Howard comes out and he's like, so we got a lot of press about Fallout 76, not necessarily the kind we wanted. <laughs> mm, yeah, you, you, you got that we were not pleased that the community was not particularly happy with the product you put out, right? So anyway, here's the new updates on our roadmap of content. <laughs> mm. And so the first thing that they announce is that there's going to be a Wastelanders expansion. The Wastelanders expansion has now. Wait for it. Wait for it. I'm 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 on pins and needles because I didn't are, watch E3. Okay, the Wastelanders expansion of Fallout 76. This was like a thing that they had to put onto title screens to let people know that this was new content. Will include <laughs> human NPCs. Human NPCs. <laughs> Am I? Was and, I right? Yes, you were. Holy Congrats. shit, they're adding humans to the game. They're adding human NPCs and, oh, wait for it. There's more? Quest lines. What? There's gonna be quest lines. Wow. My so they're adding the RPG blown. into the RPG. And the thing that always bothers me is they go to the audience and you have people like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, they finally did it. Oh, good, you're adding things to your game that should have been in the game at the beginning to make it a better game. Oh, my God. Hold on, here's my question. Wastelanders, uh, I assume you have to pay for since it's a quote-unquote expansion? Oh, no, no, they wanted to make sure to tell people that that was a free update. Oh. Because if they made you pay for that. (laughs) Good on Bethesda for giving you an update to a game that sucks to make it better for free. 
And not no. just being like, we'll add NPCs, but you gotta buy them with your atom points. Yeah, oh god, if you had to buy it with the Atomic Store. <laughs> that, that Honestly, I could see that someone doing that. We're gonna add see. NPCs, but you yeah. have to buy them from the store with real oh. money. I'd mm. be like, what? Excuse me, well, what? You have to do what now? Hello, would, who are you? You know, it would be a betrayal of their thing where they were like, it's only cosmetic items in the Adam store, but they've they, already kind of... They've already betrayed that, Nathan. Yeah, I know, because they have the repair kit stuff. Before we give Bethesda too much credit, one, I'm not going to just, like, you know, clap my hands together and say, good for you for... Finally including a thing everybody thought was already included in the game like seven months ago when it was released that we, we thought was part of like a, a Fallout experience because hu human NPCs and quest lines where, where I make choices what? in dialogue trees? That's uncalled for. What are you talking about? In a Fallout game? I've never. I mean, they have dumbed it down over the years. I guess this was just the logical extension. Yeah. In, in the meantime, over in the other corner, Obsidian is showing off Outer Worlds, where they still have the entire dialogue system that they basically came up with for New Vegas, where even if you have, like, low intelligence, when you have the low intelligence, you are barely verbal. Like, all of that is still in that game. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, they still did it. Good for them. <laughs> So they did the Wastelander thing to say, yeah, we're actually adding single player. Like, when they talked about what the actual quest line was, it's like, there are uh, settlers, and there are raiders, and these two are not happy with each And like, oh god, this story is gonna suck. This is oh, gonna be... You're playing this... with the Minutemen. Yeah, yeah, basically, here we are. Unless they're adding factions, and you can be a raider or a settler. Remember back in Fallout 4 when they only gave you four different factions to be part of? Now, oh, we're, oh now we get a whole two. Yay. And a quest line. Ooh, fun. I was like, okay, well, at least, at least that's some kind of a, a thing where you can say to yourself, all right, well, they realized that people wanted a better single-player experience, and they kind of forced this multiplayer in there, and no one really enjoyed the multiplayer unless you had specifically friends that you were playing with. You've not, you have not played Fallout 76, but basically when you go into a game, you have to play online. You have to be on a server, and the people that you get placed with are just kind of other people who happen to join at the same time. Right. Yeah, unless you have, like, a crew that you've set up. So what you end up doing is basically just trying, for me, just avoiding all the other players because you don't want to have to deal with them. Yes. And that's not a great multiplayer experience for me. No, I that mean, is not a great multiplayer experience at all. No. And I would have really just, like, like, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, if this is what you wanted to do, why didn't you just make a single-player version of the game altogether? Just make an offline version where there were NPCs, and there were quest lines, and the things I do can affect the wasteland and my play experience, have meaningful choices. You were practically there anyway. Apparently you're so close, and yet so far away. Because then they wouldn't have massive online support of <sighs> not actually having a massive online support. I mean, the great, the great massive online support of your server freezing when there's, like, three nukes that go off at the same time. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, no, they were so close to making just a single player that would have fixed a lot of problems, like, you know, the fact that the server doesn't work very well, or that, you know, the community could actually make mods for it. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, that is neither here nor there. So they did that. Then they announced what the other big expansion was going to be, and it's called Nuclear Winter. Alex, what do you think Nuclear Winter is? Um, winter? Well, I know what a nuclear winter is, but... No, okay, okay. You mean in the context of Fallout 76? In, in, the, in, the, in the context of Fallout 76. Um, I assume they're going to do a, a season change and change everything to winter? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Nuclear Winter is a Battle Royale mode. Jesus fucking... Oh, my God. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. 52-player Battle Royale mode. Because, let's face it, the thing that people really wanted was more randos running around the world at the same time. I don't think their servers game. can handle 52 people. 
No, you can't handle three nukes going off at the same time. Yeah, let's throw 52 people in there and have them run around. <laughs> it's just... let's, let's have 52 people armed with fat men. Yeah, let's see how that works out for our servers. It'll let's work out that. great. Who thought Fallout needed a Battle Royale mode? Apparently the people at Bethesda, because right. I don't know anybody in the community. I, who I mean, I guess them. Fortnite and, and whatnot are still <laughs> big, but... <laughs> But the thing I don't understand, oh, I'm going to get off on a tangent for one second because I kind of have to. For the entire for, episode. For the entire episode, it's a damn tangent. Okay, for, for anyone who's developing a AAA game, for all the people who keep making the damn Call of Duties and all of that, stop putting the damn Battle Royale mode in because, <laughs> for, because here's the thing. Fortnite, Apex Legends, these already exist and are completely free and playable on literally every damn platform known to mankind. They work, they work fine, they're solid, they play well. People like them already. How are you supposed to convince anybody that they have to shell over 60 bucks for a game that also has microtransactions, just like the free game, so that they can play the same mode? But play it worse, because we know that the, much the worse. creation engine is not something that's going to handle a 52-player nope. battle royale. No one plays... Here's a better idea for you, Bethesda. Mm. Why don't you just get together with Epic and have them put Fortnite on your fucking Pip-Boy? Oh. Or, <laughs> or, or just have a Fallout mode for, for Fortnite. <laughs> just, yeah, that would be even better. Too. Super Mutants. Just put Super Mutants in Fortnite. Everybody with, with will super be happy. sledges. Yeah, super sledges. Put the super sledge in there. Everybody will be happy. But I, I, I sit there and I'm like, nobody plays Fallout because of the pixel precision shooting mechanics. Because it doesn't have that. It, it just doesn't. It was never known for being super responsive when it came to gunplay. And it has always been known for being very glitchy, which is not great when you are going to do this kind of a mode. It, it's just, it really isn't supposed to be built for that. And the way I see this is, this can go two ways, and both of them don't really work in Bethesda's favor. Either the Battle Royale mode, which I guess that they previewed during a free play weekend, and I have not tried it, but I have heard conflicting reports. Either it's really bad, and people will ask, why did you bother trying to make this mode in the first place? Was this where you decided to put all your energy? Or, it's really good, and we will now all assume that apparently all of their design energy is going to be going into the Battle Royale mode. They're not going to bother putting energy into the rest of the actual game. I'm just wondering how you can do the loot system. and mm. whatnot. I, don't, I haven't played <clears throat> 76, so if you kill another player, yeah. can you loot them? Like, I didn't kill any players myself, but I oh, think okay. what happens, what, what I think happens, because I heard some other people explain it, is like, if you do, you can, like, loot some of the stuff, for, like, that they were holding, but then they mm -hmm. respawn, like, five feet away from you, and then, like, they'll come at you, and then they would have to kill them again, but then there's no loot on the body, so now the two of them are intertwined in this never-ending lootless cycle of death. <laughs> Um, I mean, their but, whole PvP system I heard was shitty anyways. Like, didn't you have to, like, instigate PvP by shooting someone, and then they had have, to shoot you back to actually instigate it? You have to shoot them, then they have to shoot you in order for PvP to begin. Uh, but, you both have to be level 5, and then even that doesn't really work that well, because some, sometimes your health bar just goes up instead of down. <laughs> that's a glitch. That's a yeah. feature. <laughs> that's um, a feature. It's a surprise mechanic. So I guess what people are saying is basically PvP came, came down to someone shoot, you shoot someone, yeah, and they, they walk back over you with a shotgun and shoot you back and kill you. <laughs> yeah, so I can't wait to see what, so I so can't wait like, to try so out So it's like, this. I shoot you, you shoot me, and then it's like I'm shooting, I'm point blanking you with double barrel, double barrel shotgun, so I'm getting two right. shots off, one to instigate pvp and wanted to kill you after i've instigated pvp yeah because if if you, if somebody shoots you in that game and you just don't react you take like one point of damage regardless of like what they do it's like so minimal it's really not even and the the thing about it is is that there's hardly any reason the reason why i did not go out and like start to shoot other people is because there's like no benefit to it 
there really isn't. Like, the best case scenario is you get some loot, some, like, caps off of them, but you get a bounty, and then, like, everybody's just on you for the bounty. Oh, there's a- you, if you kill someone, you get a fucking bounty? Who's placing yeah. this bounty on you? Yeah, the, NPCs. the game. The 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 the, 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 the God town game. guards that don't yeah. exist. The, tar- the, the yeah. authorities that aren't there. Exactly. That yeah. doesn't even make sense from a lore standpoint. No. Like you got a bounty on you for killing this person. I'm like, cool. Who set this yeah. bounty? Because there's no fucking established authorities the world here, did. and there's no rules. This is the... lawless, and yeah. you're like, the world's like karma, and you're like, lol. Yeah. Yeah, no, it doesn't make any sense. So I guess the idea of Battle Royale is just like, everybody's already gonna kill you, that's already established. I could see Battle Royale working if it was team combat, Yeah, but Battle Royale is not team combat. That's not versus. Now, if you want to make a good game mode that's like a Battle Royale for Fallout, you should do Wastelanders. Mm. Oh, no, sorry, it's Nuclear Winter. Right. Uh, not Wastelanders, because Wastelanders right. would make a better name for it, but whatever. You would do, like, raider gangs. Like, you have, it doesn't matter, five people, ten people, ten v ten v ten. Like, yeah. up to, if you're gonna have 52, make it down to 40, and make it four teams of ten people. Yeah. Who are all different parts of different raider gangs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I, you're I, fighting I over, you're like, a scrap heap or something. Or resources. Now you're kind of almost in, like, StarCraft territory, like, where you have different factions that are in different corners of the map. Sort of, but I mean, like you could, I mean, people if that I, are honestly, just... if I were designing this, I'd be like, alright, we're gonna have up to four different teams, mm-hmm. or two teams of, like, 20 people, yeah. and it's gonna be resource wars. It's not gonna be a battle royale, because that's just killing yeah. each other for the fucking sake of killing each other. Right. It's gonna be, you guys are trying to get this resource. Right. Because you're right. scavengers, and that's what you freaking do. Yeah. So, but, kill I, each other, and the winner yeah. gets this resource, and gets this mad amount of, like, scrap and stuff. So it gives you yeah. a incentive to go into the game mode, because it gives you, like, a bonus to your resources outside of the game mode. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Like, that would yeah. be a decent game mode, and I don't even work for Bethesda. Like, it would be, at least it would feel like an original idea that would garner some attention instead of the thing that everybody else is doing. It would be, you would basically be making a King of the Hill scenario. Mm-hmm. We get here, we hold it, we kill y'all and until the time runs up or whatever happens, yeah. whatever you want to do. And yeah. then, like, if we hold it, it's like, even territories, like, in some of the uh, World of Warcraft stuff. And mm-hmm. some of the battlegrounds where it's you take and you hold and you get that resource. Yeah. Uh, and you claim it for X amount of hours, like in uh, Outland, where you yeah, yeah. claim the towers for uh, like 12 hours. Right. And it gives you like a buff. Yeah. Even something like that is better than a battle royale mode. Yeah. In this circumstance. Well, I mean, even if you look at like a Fortnite when they have, I mean, one, like that's a hundred player battle royale. <laughs> And you actually can have, like, teams of up to, like, four, and the idea is essentially, like, you have the storm that closes in around you, so in some cases, really, the last four that are able to take the center and hold it are usually the people that win, unless, you know, the rest of your team, or unless you decide to play solo, which I usually did. Like, to Fallout's credit, at least, like, they're having monsters that are still in the game when you're doing the Battle Royale. So I guess that's something different. I mean, I mean, like sure, of League of Legends there. does that. You can go off on on the map oh, yeah. and go kill big creatures to get like team bonuses and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. See, I never played League, but but the thing that bothers me about a uh, battle royale mode generally, when people include it, is it feels like they're doing that because they're seeing dollar signs, and they've decided that that is where they're going to start putting all of their attention. Like if you looked at. I don't know if you're familiar with actually what happened with Fortnite, the reason why Fortnite is the way it is today. Uh, no, I don't pay attention to it, honestly. Okay, let me tell you the story as best I can. When Fo- Fortnite was originally developed, Epic had this idea for like a cooperative game where it was like a horde mode that was coming at your fort. So the idea was that during the day, you and a group of other players would actually build a fort. That's why they have the building mechanics in the game, where you can build walls and, and ramps and all of that. Okay. You would build a fort that you're supposed to defend and put up your walls and put up your traps and all of that. Then the night comes, Fortnite, see, that's why it's called that. 
the night would come and all of these like undead hordes of different like zombies and stuff would come and try and attack your fort and you had to defend it with all of your friends and that was the idea it's what is now referred to as the save the world mode which that's i think the, the paid content on that that's the story mode uh it was available to like the people who did the founders pack and i think it was going to become free to play at some point but what they did was that was sort of in development they wanted to show off the system and the style and everything so they made the battle royale mode and the battle royale mode was free to play because if you had, if you had bought the founders pack you could do what is now i think referred to as save the world mode but everybody was able to get into the the, the battle royale but then what happened is the battle royale mode became basically a new way for Epic to print money. Uh, yeah, essentially that is what they're doing. So much it's scary. Do you hear much about Save the World mode anymore? Because, like, I, I played at some point last year, like, when I did that free-to-play marathon, I tried Fortnite, yes. and they wanted to let me know that they were planning on releasing Save the World mode soon they're like we don't think anyone's really gonna play this mode so we're gonna pretend if i remember correctly it said like in august or september or something like that we're going to release this as a free-to-play thing and i was like oh okay you know what when it comes when that happens i'm gonna come back in and i'm gonna try it and i came right. back in after it was supposed to release and it still wasn't released <laughs> and i was like okay I guess that that was not happening. Oh, well, you know, Epic's been putting all their resources into the Getting Epic a game shopping store. cart for their game store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that takes a lot of effort. <laughs> I forgot about how much it takes. They're Ugh. spending all their money on exclusive deals right now. Yeah, gotta, gotta make sure Borderlands 3 doesn't get to any other game stores. That would be terrible. What happened with Fortnite is the Save the World mode actually sounded kind of cool. And that's why yeah. I wanted to go back and play it, because I thought, oh, wow, you get to build this fort with all these people, and then a bunch of monsters come and stuff. But, like, that has no resources allocated to it anymore, because they put in a freaking Battle Royale mode. So now, whenever games like Call of Duty comes out, and they're like, we're gonna have a Battle Royale mode, and I sit there and I say, so basically, that is the game. There's, it basically doesn't matter, the rest of it is basically utilitarian to say you put the other game in. It doesn't matter, because all you want to do is really do a Battle Royale mode. Yeah. And there are already free Battle Royale games. So yep. I don't know why you're trying to compete in a space that already has a market cornered. It doesn't well, that's the make thing, sense. Is it's like when Blizzard put out uh, Heroes of the Storm, mm -hmm. which is now not supported by Blizzard, I believe. Mm. They went, cool, MOBAs are really big right now, League of Legends, we want to compete with that. And they put out a freaking MOBA. Yep. And then when we're going to do Heroes of the Storm, which, for all intents and purposes, was a decent game. Yeah. It didn't really play well on my computer at the time. Yeah. But, like, the theory behind it's great. The game isn't terrible, and it's actually more team-friendly and whatnot and player-friendly than, than League is, for instance. Right. But it's like, you're in a space that is already wildly popular and has a huge community already doing the one thing. Mm-hmm. What is going to make them come to this one yeah. and spend their money here? Like, I guess it's a free game, but you have to buy all those cosmetics. And if they've already put all those hundreds of dollars, yes, hundreds of dollars, oh, into yes. all the characters they've unlocked and gotten new skins for in League of Legends, for instance, I mean, the only thing you've got is your in-world universe yeah. for your games to draw them over. It's not the game they're coming for if they're playing yeah. Heroes of the Storm. Right. It's the fact they can play any of these characters from any of your games. And I, I think that that's just, that, that is a problem that I keep seeing crop up, and it's just so annoying where everybody just decides to jump on the bandwagon. Because... And that's not how you get ahead of the curve. No, because the bandwagon has already gone down the street. It's already yeah. sold all that it's going to sell. I mean, it'll still sell more if you come out with it, but it's like you're not going to be getting nearly as much as the guys who did, you know, like said it. It's like Minecraft is 10 years old. People still yeah. buy Minecraft. So it's like all those games that came out after Minecraft who were trying to ride on Minecraft's success are just mm -hmm. kind of like half-baked games. Right. It's like, you know, yeah. Minecraft is still classic and people still love Minecraft because yeah. it's Minecraft. So it's well, like... 
That and like a, the card building game. I guess that was the other one too. Like deck builders. Deck builders. Yeah. Like there were a couple that really worked. Like Magic, like worked, and they made a digital version, and people were like, "That's good. Uh, it it works perfectly fine." And then works Blizzard be- had that one. works because the people playing the Magic <laughs> mm. game online are people who would play Magic anyway. The actual game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It builds off of that success. And then Blizzard had come out with, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but... Hearthstone. Hearthstone, right. And Hearthstone did well, but then there was like a hundred other ones that were from all licensed properties. In fact, I believe, if I remember correctly, Bethesda announced that there's going to be an Elder Scrolls one. Of course there is. Of course there's going to be an Elder Scrolls. Oh, good news, by the way, Alex, from the uh, Bethesda press conference. Um, There are going to be dragons in Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if they put three of them in a server at the same time, it's going to crash the whole damn thing. <laughs> anyway. That's because they're going to land and it's going to be a nuke going off. Yeah, there's going to be a nuke going off. Yeah, did you know that in Elder Scrolls Online, an online game that Bethesda made, there were human NPCs and towns already? No, I didn't. I didn't play it. Just wanted to let everybody know that that was a thing that they already did. I watched a thing where it was like, I th- I thought I was only going to watch it for a few minutes, and it was like a 20-minute long video. Oh, if I could find it, I'll try to link it. But it was uh, it was like, this is Fallout 76, a, a $60 AAA title. <laughs> and it was 20 minutes of all the streamers and the reviewers and stuff playing this game and just getting so frustrated with it. It was interspersed with, uh, interviews from, like, the crew at Bethesda, and Todd Howard talking about, like, this is the most ambitious project, it's like 16 times the latency, it's like si- 16 times as big, we've got people being pulled in from, like, Zenimax, Arcane, Id, and I'm like, oh, thanks for throwing under the bus all of your studios that actually did work on other things. Yeah. <laughs> like, just throw, because I gotta tell you, I don't know what Arcane and Id did to work on this game, but I am not assuming it's, like, anything to do with gameplay, graphics, story. (laughs) What story? There is no story, exactly. I see, like, what happened was they can say that, like, Arcane worked on the game because some person at Arcane took a piece of data from this desk and put it over to another desk, and they were like, you get attached to the thing. You know, I just had a thought now that you're talking about them putting the um, NPCs and stuff in and the quests yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. See, I was just thinking, how are they going to implement that? In terms of like, how do they explain that from a lore standpoint? Or How do they explain that in a in-game standpoint? How do you justify new content coming out and suddenly there are these NPCs and quest givers and towns and shit? Yeah, because I can tell you from playing it, like they make a big point. To explain that, like, people are just gone and you're the first ones out and everything. Now, for the press conference that they held, the people who came out tried to explain it thusly. Season one was uh, the people from the vault, like you and all the other players, coming out into this new wasteland that was uninhabited. Season two are wastelanders coming back to the the West Virginia landscape. No one would ever come back to us. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, but here's, see, that's what my thought was. Like, how do you explain this? Like, how are you going to in-game explain this? Like, are they moving back to the area? Do they suddenly just show up and you log in the next day and suddenly with this patch There's downloaded, somewhere. they're just there. There's a it's like now. they've always been there. Yep. It's like, are you going to do it that way, or are you going to do uh, like what World of Warcraft does leading up to expansions and have a month or two month long series of quest lines and events going on? Quest to lines? Sp- <laughs> they have to add those in, I know. But yeah. like, you know, World of Warcraft, you've played it. Yes. For new expansions coming out, they will lead up to that. Yes. They'll do patches and they'll go, here's an event going on during Pandaria. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the Dark Spear Revolution, where Vol'jin led a revolution against the War Chief Garrosh at the time. Yeah, and you, as a player, took part of that, and that led up to the end raid of that expansion. Right, that all led to Draenor. The in-game story did yeah month, two months, three months worth of content 
to explain these changes going on in the game. Yeah. So if Bethesda were smart, mm. you could do it that way, and you yeah. could do a patch here. Have these guys start moving in eastward, northward, southward, wherever the hell yeah. they're coming from. And you yeah. start seeing a trickle of, like, uh, settler and raider caravans even coming in. Yeah. Uh, and then and it's like they smart. establish a foothold, and then you can do, like, quests and stuff to help them build their settlements. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that would make sense to me. That would be decent. Because yes. then you start with a game that goes, hey, you're the only ones here. And then you're scrounging around through all the ruins. But then people are coming in and you're like, oh, there are more people. We can either help them or kill them. Right. Kind of deal. Yeah. And that would make sense. Because yeah. then you can go, cool, they're getting a foothold here. I've been around here. I can help them out. Mm-hmm. Do the quest, build a reputation, get other stuff, settlements, be a part of it, like ally yourself to settlements and shit. Yeah. That would make sense to me for yep. this to work well. Yep. Suddenly coming in the next day and having everything just be like, hey, we've been here the whole time. How you doing? Here, here's, here's the difference, though, is that when it comes to World of Warcraft, I think that they that Blizzard always had the idea that they would have a, a continually evolving storyline. That would take them through a lot of different expansions. Like, that they would be able to do that. I really swear that Bethesda had no intention of ever putting human NPCs or quest lines in the game. And that it was only because of the amount of backlash they got for not having any of it that they decided that they needed to change course. Because if you play the game, they also make a very concerted point that you don't even have adversaries or enemies to fight that are human there's nothing human out there except for the players and they made a specific point that all the players are basically real people and they wanted to make that the big statement the big reveal of this experience that they were building i don't think they ever had any intention of having to go in this direction and it was just the absolutely not you don't build a game with no NPCs yeah. and no quests, mm-hmm. and then suddenly backtrack to going, yeah, we're going to add these things in later, because yeah. it's what we are going to plan to do. Yeah. No, they you don't just no do that. Intention. No, they you, had no intention to do that. They had zero intention. They They're like, zero. no, we're not going to do that. And then everyone's like, where's all this stuff that we wanted? This isn't the game we wanted. There's no any of this stuff that we wanted, and that would make this game actually immersive. They were not clear about what was in the game. They, they did not, because they were saying, yeah, sure, you can play it as a single-player game. I can tell you, I tried playing it as a single-player game. There's not a lot of game to it. There's just, no. there, there's a lot of big open spaces that don't have a lot in it. And the graphic, and, and as far as graphics and setting, and even the visual artifacts and stuff that happens in the game, like the actual assets, it's all pretty much, ta- like, it's pretty much copy-pasted from Fallout 4. I hate yeah. to say it, but it's true. Like, if you look at the buildings and you look at a lot of them, it's, it's basically the same. Like, they took, oh, these are what houses looked like in Fallout 4. Here, put a house here. But anyway, the problem is, then they actually had interviewed <laughs> Todd Howard. And Todd Howard basically came out and admitted, we knew that the game would not be great at the beginning. Like, we knew that when we launched the game, it was going to have a lot of issues. Then maybe you should have launched it later or something. <clears throat> I don't yeah. understand the, we gotta launch this now. One's like, no, there's, you can wait. There's, Play, your fan base will wait. Mm. See, that's a problem where, where, like, I've been putting together a video that maybe I'll be able to get out soon, where I complain about game companies continually trying to sell me their betas. Mm. Because, honestly, from a financial standpoint, I don't understand how this makes sense. I don't understand how... Selling a game that is unfinished, promising people that inside a year it will be finished, at which point the game has probably gone through three price drops because there wasn't much game there, can make sense. Because by the time you finish making the game, it's now a bargain basement title. And that's where your sales are going to come in. I I just... It it just boggles the mind. Yeah. But then... This is the thing that just took me over the edge. This is the reason why I really wanted to rant on it about on the show today. This is why we've been ranting about Bethesda for 30 minutes. Because this all came to a head. Like, I had heard all that information and I was kind of shaking my head. And I was going, oh my god, I don't 
even understand what their thinking is. Like, if if people are asking why wasn't there a single player experience, why would you think, hey, what we should really do is make a fifty two person freaking battle royale mode? But then I go on my Xbox, and, and and on the Xbox they're saying, hey, E three sales. Like, here are some games that are at E three, and we're doing a big sale thing for it. So I go in and look just to see if there's anything that's on good sale that maybe I haven't played. And I see the listing for Fallout 76. Now, if I remember correctly, and I, I have not been able to verify this, but I really, I, I, I distinctly remember that they had hard marked down Fallout 76 at some point. That, that it was $60 when it came out. And then within two weeks, it had dropped like by 40%. Yeah, for Black Friday, it it was like 35 but then it just stayed at 35 on sale but that it was considered still sale price and that it did have some other sales but for some reason i remember distinctly seeing listings where it was listed at 35 and then it was on sale from 35 to like 15 or 20 yeah i feel like i i saw those i distinctly something. remember this well i go on my xbox and they're talking about the amazing sale that they're having 50% off the list price of $60 for $30 hmm. for Fallout 76. Can I get 50% off the $30? <laughs> nope, because that's already 50% off. The list price is $60. So can we put it on the Epic Store so we can get an extra $10 off? <laughs> you can't buy it on Steam. I was like, I, I, I wanted to see if it had, like, listings on Steam where I could actually just verify. It's not listed on Steam. Of course it's not, because they want you to download the Bethesda launcher. Yes, because Bethe that's right. That's probably... Because then you can write them an essay on why cheating is bad. Yeah, exactly. You can do that. And I'm sitting there, and I went on an epic Twitter rant, which no one saw, so don't worry about it. <laughs> But I you should link it in the link it in the show description. I'll it's link fine. it in the show description. I I, I can find <laughs> it. But but anyway, I went on this Twitter rant. I should say that ten tweet thread at this point, where I basically was like, "No, Bethesda, your press conference was not good enough to make me think that this is now back to a sixty dollar game, and mm. nothing you do is going to make me think that you get a pass for trying to sell us crap that was not finished that you knew was not finished." to try and complete it later and give the bog standard minimum amount of effort in fixing it later, and that that is now worth having the game be a full price game seven months, eight months down the line after you initially released it, telling people that it was a full game. I'm not going to give you a pass. This is why people uh, had filed lawsuits and shit Yeah, against well, and Bethesda. You couldn't even get a damn canvas bag out of them, did it? Yeah, it's, it's, there was so much <laughs> negative PR. I mean, negative PR is still PR. I get that. It gets your name out yeah. there. But Bethesda, if you had people filing lawsuits because of yeah. your shitty practices, mm. pulling your return thing from the store, yep. uh, not letting people get their returns, pulling people's games from them for things, uh, banning them from things... This is how you get yeah. people really angry. At, at, at some point, I even did, like, uh, try to, to, like, link or, or retweet that just to ask a lot of people that are pretty prominent game critics, you know, pretty, pretty prominent people in the space that actually are, like, try to be consumer advocates, just to ask them, like, hey, am I crazy about this? And I did not get any response back, so I don't know. Maybe I literally am crazy. Maybe I maybe, am crazy about maybe this. Maybe you're crazy. But I really, for some reason... Now, I can tell you, if you were to go online right now, like, I, I can verify that I went... I saw the price listing on, like, Walmart. It's 17 bucks at Walmart. <laughs> so... Is that on sale? No, it didn't say anything about being like, on sale. It was uh, just like I gotta, I gotta look really bucks. quick because I, I got a funny thing. What is it seventeen? Oh yeah, here you go. Fallout seventy six game for PS four or Xbox One seventeen dollars at Walmart was fifty nine seventy. So um, they never added. Is it, is it on sale? Does this count as on sale? I don't know. Because if it does, if it counts as on sale, I can't get more discount on it. <laughs> Are you gonna try to get discount on top of the discount? Yeah, I was gonna. I get. I get my work. Discount. When it gets down to five bucks, I'll buy it. I mean, but, accurate. But like uh -huh. the thing, the thing about it is, if you don't remember, in November, like, cause two weeks into their thing, they had listed at thirty-five for Black Friday and beyond. 
but there was yeah they they price dropped it like two weeks after it came out yeah and that was a whole thing too but yeah they're like yeah we're actually not gonna be able to sell it at 60 let's just try to sell it for whatever we can yeah well i can tell you right now if you go on the xbox store or anything like that it is now retailing for 60 again and i assume not selling i am going to make a big assumption that it is not selling xbox's whole thing is mixer so they they were promoting that like, hey, watch Fallout seventy six on being played live on on Mixer, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna see how many people are actually looking. There's like 180 people actually watching Fallout seventy six streams. That mm-hmm. you know is a is a game that came out like last year, and probably most of those people are waiting for hilarious bugs to happen in those games. I assume so. Yeah, or they're people that are just watching their favorite streamers who happen to be playing Fallout seventy six yeah. for the bugs. To to contrast that. Grand Theft Auto V, a game that came out like six years ago, has like 3,000 people watching it. (laughs) Oh, jeez. Well, that's for the hilariousness and killing people. Well, yeah, that's for the online component. But just to give you an idea of the longevity (laughs) that a game that came out last year has so little market share in the streaming community. But But the thing that just boggles the mind is I still don't understand, like, why... They thought to themselves one day, hey, here's all the things that we do right. And here's all the things... Let's do them completely wrong. Yeah, and here here are all the things that we do wrong. Let's make a game where we cannot highlight any of the things we do right. And we have to showcase all the things that we do wrong. Because that is Fallout 76, in a nutshell. It is is like, you know, well, boy, we have a lot of bugs. Well... If we were to talk about the good thing, well, a lot of times modders will get in there and modders will either fix a lot of those things or or they'll improve upon stuff. So the idea of having mod support, well, we're going to create a game that doesn't have mod support. Um, we have really shaky like online servers. Uh, so if it, on an offline game, it's fine. You get to play by yourself. It's not really a big deal. You just have access to the store. We're going to make a completely online game. So you have to have those servers working <laughs> every single step. And and the frustrating part for me is I have sunk a lot of time into Bethesda's games, and I know you have too. Um, yeah, you know, we've we've spent inordinate amounts of time in, in Fallout and, and Elder Scrolls. I have enjoyed a lot of that time, and I've, I've appreciated the scope of what was built there. But when you strip out the things that make a Bethesda game good, the things that make it bad are very, very noticeable. Yes. Like, the, like VATS does not work in real time. It just doesn't. The reason why you had VATS was because the targeting system sucked. So now the targeting system still sucks, but VATS does too. It doesn't <laughs> work. Well, it, and I know you haven't played Fallout 76. At some point, I'm thinking that you should at least try it so that you can see what it is. Uh, if you can at least just get like a secondhand copy or something. But what happens with VATS in this game is you're aiming near a creature. You throw it into VATS. It's still going at the exact same speed, but like you're getting percentages on like how likely you are to hit that creature at any given time. If you just hit the if you just hit the trigger button without aiming, so basically, as a creature goes behind buildings and stuff, all of a sudden it goes down to like zero percent, and then just like goes back up to ninety zero ninety zero ninety, and it becomes Yay. it becomes so obvious. And it the, the thing that becomes so stupid is that because of that inconsistency, I can be aiming directly at a creature, and I could hit it outside of that. But if I throw it into VATS, it will only give me like an 80% chance to hit it. And if I push the trigger, it might not hit. That's how stupid it is. <laughs> that I can actually, that it like becomes less useful than if I didn't use it at all. You know, that's how, that's how it would be. When I had seen that and I was like, you gotta, you gotta be kidding me that you still want to make people believe that. I guess because of the amazing new features that we're going to have. That we can now price it back to like a, a sixty dollar game and make people think that it's worth it is just absurd. And it honestly, 
I don't know why anybody, if you were looking for a single player experience and you were looking at Fallout 76 and thinking to yourself, oh, hey, there's going to be like a, some single player stuff in there and I get to make dialogue choices and stuff. You know what? Just go buy Fallout 4. With all the right. content included, it's probably like 25 bucks and, and there's so much more game and it is all a single player experience. Plus, Nothing. if you're not happy with all the content they have, put mods in it. Yeah, just put mods in it. Nothing they include at this point in Fallout 76 is going to be as rich or as interesting or, or as just as much content for a single-player experience as they already had in a game that's half off for the deluxe edition with all the add-on content. I don't even know what this game is anymore, and I've just... I've had a rough year, I think, with games. I've, like, I, I'm just getting off. Last month I played Anthem, another testament to a bad studio decision-making. <laughs> Looking ahead, I think that there's a few that I'm kind of worried about. <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't know what to do with that anymore. I'm sad, and I'm full of rage, and I needed to vent in an episode of this show to explain my frustration, I would absolutely positively steer people in the direction of a Minecraft or a Stardew Valley, even like a, a Slime Rancher, or even a Subnautica, which is, you know, made by a pretty small studio. Any of these games that are have tons of content, tons of stuff to do, and are a fraction of the price of what the big studios are putting out, are just complete games from the moment you play them, and were made with the intent and made with a staff that seems honestly really passionate about games. I don't see that passion from Bethesda, and it feels like Fallout 76 is the absolute antithesis of that. Yeah, that sounds about accurate. Yeah, and so, but hey, a freaking battle royale mode. I battle royale. I, I swear to God, I pay here, pay sixty bucks to play a worse version of Fortnite. No thanks. I swear to God. <laughs> and the, the ironic thing is, like when I actually played Fallout seventy six, my impression was it it didn't make me angry like it made a lot of people. It just made me feel very disappointed because it really was an inferior Fallout experience. It still had some of the Fallout flavor, but it was not the game I wanted and, and the game that I was hoping it would be, um, considering they were like, oh, yeah, it's like t f four times larger than Fallout 4, and it's so much bigger, and there's so much more stuff. And I got in there, and it was like a barren wasteland, and I guess it lives Literally. up to its name, a wasteland, but and it lived up to the name Fallout, too, because, boy, they've been facing a lot of that recently. A, a once great game company... I am no longer uh, excited for Starfield. They previewed literally nothing for Elder Scrolls Six and, F and Starfield. Last year we got a nice screensaver. Um, this year we got nothing. Basically just, just a note from Todd Howard that was like, we're looking for more input from our community as we develop those games further. Oh, so they're actually going to listen to us instead of doing fucking Fallout 76 again? I mean, I guess, but I think that they're still building them in the creation engine. So... So feedback, lots of it. Let's give them lots of feedback that says don't. Yes. Make a new game engine. I think, I did not see this part, but I think they were talking about, like, new engine technology or something that they were, that they were working on, uh, either with Bethesda or one of the other studios. I just don't know why, honestly, why Bethesda doesn't just, at this point, because they seem to be much more interested and much better at being a publisher than a developer, just hand the damn reins over to one of the other <laughs> facets of your of your company just have like just have elder scrolls be made by like machine games they did they did wonders with wolfenstein the story will be great just have them do that no just have have id make fallout arcane would love to make starfield for you they already made prey if it's anything like prey it's gonna be great and they had game engines that look good and play good, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> don't know. Don't know. They didn't use the creation engine, I can tell you that much. Uh, Fallout 76 is still not good, but hey, it's going to have a battle royale mode, everybody, so freaking celebrate with 
do do me a favor, go into a session of Fallout 76 and just everybody launch as many nukes as you can <laughs> in a battle royale mode. Sounds good to me. Just have 50 nukes go off at some the same time, see how that works. Yeah, I know I do have feedback for them when it comes to Starfield. Don't use the damn creation engine. Yeah. Use a new engine. Okay, anyway, um, so... This has been Nathan's Ranting Hour. This has been, um, yeah, Nathan decided to get ahead of the curb. We have, uh, we have another live episode coming up pretty soon, uh, once this releases, and chances are people are going to be talking a lot about, uh, different things that happened at E3, because I know that that's going to become a topic of conversation. A lot of people are going to want to put in their two cents, but I wanted to... At least have this moment where we get a big thing off of my chest so I do not have to repeat it on a live show <laughs> afterward because it's unnecessary and it's a longer conversation than I really had. If I were to say that this has anything to do specifically with like game design and stuff, I think it, it has everything to do with how a game company can alienate some of their most ardent fans because uh, I was one and I certainly am not one now. So this is why I don't fanboy over game companies. I wouldn't say I fanboyed over Bethesda, but I was willing to give them a, a notable amount of slack because I thought that their ambition to create game worlds that were big and vast and lush was worth giving them a few passes on graphic glitches and, you know, gameplay stutters and, and problems with the stability of the game. But I don't see that kind of ambition in 76, and really what I see is them trying to find a way to jump on a bandwagon that's going to make them a lot of money for the long term, um, that does not really care what happens to the players that are playing it, or their experience inside of the game. And it's going to take a long time and a lot of work for them to get me back on board for their next project. Frankly, I feel like they threw a lot of people under the bus and lost a lot of goodwill among the gaming populace. I mean, we'll still be interested. We might just not buy their games until they're on sale. That's t- kind of what I do normally because right. I'm uh, a broke bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> because yeah, I don't I... want to shell out $60 for a game I'm going to play for two hours. And I think actually a lot of people realized that, that uh, there were gamers that were doing that and that that's why they started doing like free play weekends and stuff like that. Um, and those are great, because yeah. then you can try a game, and if you really like it, you can buy it. I just tried Division 2 because of a free play weekend, um, and it's okay. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's okay. It, it, well, it's better than Division 1, <laughs> I can tell you that. I mean, twice as good. It's twice as good, it has the number 2 in it. Those are, those are great, because yeah. <laughs> game demos aren't really a thing that happens so much anymore. No, and it used to be. Getting a game out there so people can play it yeah. before they have to buy it helps so much as long as it's a good game it can hurt or help but it can help so much with word of mouth and just it's, exposure and getting people to want to be interested the, in it the, and, the and thing, that's a topic for another yeah episode the thing, i think at the, this point really the thing that it does is it provides transparency and trust if you can give yes. me the game and i can try some of it or or at least see some of that game if i can play an hour of your game as I've seen, like game previews, they'll let you do like an hour with the game and then you can buy it if you're liking it. That provides trust because I know what I'm getting. Something to think about when you are developing a game. I've seen more in the tabletop community really like providing early access to some of their product before they have a final one so that people can come and play test it, making it more accessible um, to the general population and taking in feedback, and being really considerate with it. I would like to see that more from the video game development aspect. No, once upon a time, we had demo discs and we had all of that, but then again, we would also get a disc that had a complete game on it. Um, So, yeah. Uh, Okay, I think I am done ranting, and... um, uh, Nathan's going to go have a sleepy nap nap (laughs) rest time with his deliciously good dreams of not having this weigh on his chest or something. Yes, this is not weighing on my chest anymore, so I feel like this was a very therapeutic episode. There we go. Um, (laughs) Therapy with Nathan is going to be the title. Alex, if they want to hear more of uh, me... 
being angry about stuff. Well, no, I guess you don't hear much of that. But if you want to You can hear, go to our YouTube channel to find that. I have a video where I tried to play Anthem. <laughs> no one watched it, but I can tell you <laughs> it was something. If you want to find uh, more of us talking about things that aren't just Nathan ranting about Bethesda <laughs> for an hour, uh, you can find us at Delcast.com. Yes, uh, all the, the non-rant-related things are there. You can also find us on all of the podcast apps, the, the Twitter, the, not the Twitter, but god damn it. <laughs> you can, Google Play, Apple, uh, yeah. iTunes, Spotify. Yeah, Spotify, you can find us on all of those. Uh, so please rate and review and subscribe. Uh, if you like these rants, just... Let me know. I could probably Yeah, if you like Nathan spewing off nonsense like this, let's let us know. We'll do it more often. Yeah. Maybe not as a normal like Dell show, but you know, we can always throw up an extra one every once in a while. Yeah, once in a while we can always do like one of our little uh recaps of stuff that happened and just our impressions. Sort of like what we did for the or, March uh Or if you special. really want, yeah. we'll throw it up on our Patreon. Yeah, uh, we can still do maybe that. Maybe we can throw it up for free on the Patreon. Oh, yeah, so you can go Just to get there, people yeah. to actually go look at that page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe uh, become a patron for a dollar. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a possibility. Actually, our, uh, our unedited episodes sometimes have some of the rants uh, associated with them that we don't <laughs> normally have in the episodes. Some of our unedited episodes go on for three hours and just are us going off on tangents. They sure do. <laughs> And that's always fun to watch. Thank you to our shiny level patrons, by the way, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dominic Perry. Uh, and uh, you can also find us on social media platforms. You can find us on Twitter. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is at Delve Podcast. Yep. And uh, so, hey, Alex, you know, I think uh, for our first episode back after this little hiatus, this was um, therapeutic. <laughs> therapeutic. Nothing We're going to lose all the subscribers. <laughs> No, not Jim! Uh, as you say yourself, please, please don't forget <laughs> to dislike and unsubscribe. Don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe, everybody. Because, <laughs> hey, that's my new thing. I'm, I'm sticking with it, and I enjoy it. And you know what? It seems to be working the way I hoped. As in, no one's disliking or unsubscribing, and no. occasionally they're actually subscribing? Yes? Anyway, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you for joining us, everybody. We will see you on the next show, maybe with one of those topics we actually threw out there at the beginning. Until then, thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah, Alex, anything uh, anything you wanted to get off your chest while we're at it? <laughs> uh, no. No, we, we we're good. I, I don't usually have a whole lot to complain about, Nathan. That's good. That oh, hey, that must be nice for you. <laughs> it's 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 nice. I try to I try to live my life pretty stress free, Nathan. That's good. I totally understand that, and I appreciate it. And I try to live pretty stress free, but sometimes something just comes along that hits me in a way that just bothers the hell out of me, and I can't do anything about it. I assume it was the nukes, three of them at once. Three of them at the same time. <laughs>